world's most famous physical therapist on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Shrub, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Together we are the most famous physical therapist on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Today we're going to show you how to stop these 12 daily habits or your hip pain may never go away. A dozen. A dozen. There you go. Even dozen. So uh, these are habits that can contribute to or even perpetu perpetuate hip mm. pain. You know, right. can, some of them could cause hip pain, without a doubt. Right. And so. most people don't think of these, but as therapists, uh, we run into it and, and we correct these things on a regular basis. So it's it's us normal, but yep. uh, it's uh, it'll be interesting. You'll probably find you might be guilty of a couple of these. Yeah, so sitting for a prolonged periods of time, you should really be breaking these up by getting up every so 20 minutes or so and mm -hmm. getting moving the hip. The hips, the joints, the way they work is that they do not like it to be still for a long time. There's no as much fluids moving through there. The waste products can build up. The blood flow is not going like it should. Mm -hmm. So you, you want to get the ball and socket moving uh, in some manner. Right. And this is more prevalent in the older population as right. opposed to younger people, as that makes sense. But um, uh, Brad, can you give me two of those pads? Two of them? Yeah, and yeah, you can sit low on that. Sure. But I, I, yeah, I want to just show, yeah, basically, you're going to show like sitting on bleachers. Right. If you're sitting low like this, or particularly if you're really yeah. low like this. Look at your knees, how high they are. Yeah. That's putting undue stress on the hip. The same with me. The, the knee is a lot higher than the hip. You're going to be putting a lot of stress on the hip and back, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's so, one of those things that you do not want to sit like that for a length of time. For any period of time, yeah. right. All right, Brad, how about sitting uneven? So, yeah. I, again, I'm guilty of this. I don't know why I do this, but when I'm at my counter eating breakfast and stuff, I, I lean on one side. I am reading the paper. I'm doing my puzzle. <laughs> and uh, I, I, you know, I tend to, and there's people that also will put one foot underneath them or something yeah. like that. Yeah, you one do One of that. these deals. Right. And then it just, uh, it's on your hip. It's not good. And it's not good on your back either to, to sit like that prolonged. Right. What it's going to do is it's going to put excessive pressure on one hip and less pressure on the other. And it may stretch out muscles that can yeah. cause a muscle imbalance then. And that is, again, one of those things as a younger person, you can do it without a yeah, problem. Yeah, you can get away with it. Then you develop a habit and yeah. do it as you grow older, and then we start having problems. So the same thing with standing uneven. So you see that a lot in mothers uh, when they're holding the baby on the hip. What about dads? Well, yeah, I suppose dads too, <laughs> but it seems like women have a little more hips usually, and they've yeah. got room for, to put the baby there. Sure. So... <laughs> We're going to get people mad at us. Yeah, maybe sexist. so, maybe <laughs> so. Um, but um, just as a rule of thumb, because, you know, one thing, usually you, what, how you stand uneven is you hyperextend one knee. Do you know what I mean? Straighten you can, it right yeah, out. You straighten it right out, and then you lean onto that side. Yep. So if you get in the habit of keeping both knees bent, you're probably not going to stand uneven. Right. So it's something you have to think about. I know... You know, I've seen it suggested, I've never had a patient do this, but uh, to put a piece of tape along the back of their <laughs> leg with the knee bent, and then whenever time you try to straighten it, it actually pulls on the leg a little bit. Sure. Let's so you know. it breaks you that, it breaks that habit. So um, standing prolonged too, you know, you, you want to also give yourself breaks, mm -hmm. try to sit down for a while and. You know what I mean? Mix it up. Yep. You're yeah. going to stand for 10 minutes, sit for a few minutes, go back to standing. Uh, very common. All right. Walking incorrect be because you need a gait aid. So this is a lot of people that Brad and I see. They have weakness in their hip or they have pain in their hip, so they're trying to protect the hip. So they walk like this. This is a, called a Trendelenburg. And oh, sorry Whoa, about that. Um, it's an obvious limp, and they think – they would don't want to use a cane because they don't want to draw attention to them. Sure. But this is drawing way more attention to them if they would instead use a cane. Do you want to show how using a cane, Brad, can... Sure. So, plus it's going to wear that hip joint out faster. So, if we're doing this, what... Now, this is a little... Uh, it, it's one of the points. You're actually going to put the cane in the opposite hand. Right. And then you're just going to... Right, and that's the one that you, you can jump to the head to that one, Brad. So okay. if you if you do it wrong, you have the cane in the wrong hand. Right, if, so this is my painful hip, and you put it in your right hand, which, you know, almost it makes sense, but it, it, it actually doesn't work because that actually... Yeah, then you try to lean forward, yeah. and you, you look like Dr. House. Yeah, that 
movie or whatever, yeah, sitcom the, or yeah, yeah. drama. Dr drama, they don't call them sitcoms anymore? Well, it's not funny. Well, I guess it is somewhat funny. Uh, well, it's funny to watch him walk because he's a yeah. doctor and he's got the cane in the wrong hand. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you use the cane in the opposite hand, mm -hmm. it'll uh, take away the limp. All right. Uh, not participating in a walking program. A lot of people have hip pain and they go, I don't want to walk because mm -hmm. of my hip hurts. I don't want to make your pain worse, mm -hmm. but if you can participate in a walking program, maybe using a cane exactly. or a walker, right. um, it's going to be so much better for your hip than if you do not. Right. You know, a, a four-wheeled walker can be a really good option because yes, you can. can walk so far when you get fatigued or your hip starts to hurt, just simply sit down on the seat, Absolutely. give it a break, uh, and then just do it without pushing it. All right, Brad, do you want to give me oh, that for I'm, just a yeah, second yeah. here? All right, this is, uh, you can sleep incorrectly also, uh, and it can definitely cause hip pain. Mm. I know this from personal experience. So first off, you don't want to lie on the painful hip. Sure. Uh, uh, whenever possible, you want to lie on the non-painful hip mm -hmm. if, if you have one <laughs> um, or <laughs> on your back. Now, but the problem is, let's say this is uh, not even a painful hip or uh, but over time, you you tend to sleep like this, and this is what I used to do. Yeah. And this stretches this hip out over time, and it actually can start throwing off the muscle imbalance. You know, it can create a muscle imbalance, mm -hmm. and you can start developing pain. And I sure. was, I was getting pain here, and so uh, you have to sleep like this, or better yet, is to put a pillow between your legs. Yep. And that feels so typically much better. It's it feels much better. I, I, I'm going to warn you, in the summer, it's too hot. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I did purchase one of the ones that you use cushions to use between your legs. It's not so bulky and, right, and warm. Right, right. It, it works out great. So to this day, I still use it, Brad, every every night. So. Really? Yep. Excellent work purchase. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, number uh, 10, using a bicycle. I see this in my neighborhood sometimes. They're using uh, a bicycle, and the seat is way too low. And so they, you know, they're going like yeah, this. Yeah, the and knees are coming up above their hip level, which is really low seat. Yeah, and it's really causing increased stress on their hip. And um, the knees. And the knees, yeah. yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So you really want to make sure that the seat's not too low. Uh, Plus, you know, they may not be aware of it, but you raise the seat up, and you can go, you can pedal with a lot less energy. It's just not near as hard. Yep, yep. Um, you know, just, again, talking about the movement, you, some people are just too stationary every day. Mm -hmm. they, they need to dis inter disperse movement throughout yeah. the day. Yeah. It's just that it's really that important. Uh, not wearing proper footwear, especially if you, like, work on car concrete or a hard surface, you probably do need maybe a little bit of extra cushioning in your shoe, or maybe you need a cushion mat if you're in yeah. one spot. Right. So... Yeah, you can you can buy those inserts. They're relatively inexpensive. Yeah, those those are inexpensive. Um, you just can cut them out so they fit in your shoe, and and uh, that'll give you a little bit yeah, of. Yeah, they're usually twenty dollars or somewhere in there. Depending okay, on um, we don't want you exercising incorrectly either. Um, so instead of um, mm. doing this, like if you walk, uh, if you're doing walking, you probably want to avoid hills mm -hmm. and maybe even stairs to start off with. You might want to avoid running because obviously there's more pounding yep. with running. Well, if you're walking on a road, that can be a bad thing if the road, they always have a camber on the road so the water drains off. But when you walk on the side, that makes one leg essentially longer. It throws your hips off, your hips, uh, your pelvis and your little back. Uh, walking on a sidewalk, something flat is by far better. Yeah, and if you do walk on the camber, it is better to walk one way and then walk on the same side on the way back because you're even <laughs> things out a little yeah. bit. You, you'll know. I mean, it's one of those things that uh, catches up with you. Well, that's why, you know, even if you walk around a track, mm -hmm. you, you don't want to go the same way. Each day. I, I, we used to have our runners even run one way and then run the other way. Sure. Too, because that makes a lot yeah. of sense. Um, and also, you don't want to use incorrect form when exercising. Like, especially, I, I see one example here when people do squats and they, their knees start coming in like this. Sure. And they're internally rotating. Not that uncommon. Yeah. Um, that's why we, they have a lot of times uh, trained with uh, uh, exercise band around their hips so it strengthens. Right. So, so. That, that's getting pretty yeah, particular for get this in video. The weeds, getting in the weeds with yeah. that one. But I, th I thought I'd mention it. You mm -hmm. want to make sure your hip uh, is a good position when you're working out. Anything else you want to add, Brad? 
No, no, I think uh, we've covered quite a bit, actually. <laughs> okay, remember this is uh, part of a, uh, this is actually a series of videos on, part of a series of videos on hip pain. So right. go to bobandbrad.com and go to the program section, look for the videos on hip pain. Right. And we have a whole bunch of them. Watch the ones that pertain to you. Yep, just look at the title and it'll be self-explanatory. And each one has a PDF printout so you can have a review of the video with pictures of the exercises. Makes life a lot easier. It's uh, all free. Yeah. You know, we don't ask even for an email. So That's it's right. just our gift to you. There you go. Thanks for watching. Thank you.